Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna talk about some common heat trace controller settings and programming on the Envent 920 heat trace controller. So we're gonna cover just a couple, comp, couple topics here related to heat trace controller programming. So let's get into it. So the 920 controller, I'm gonna start with the interface module on the, on the, on the Envent 920 controller module. So as I mentioned, the Envent controller module, if I haven't mentioned it, it is a two point heat trace controller. So you can have two, independent heat trace circuits that are off one of these modules. So on the main interface, you'll actually see A and B that are cycle through here. And what the, what the controller is going to give us is indication on point A. It's going to tell us our current. It's going to tell us our current temperature, what our set point is. And then if there were any alarms, it's going to tell you those alarms as well. So point B, this is our demo lab. So there's a ground fault trip that we've set up on this one um, on point B. Now on your, on the buttons, actually before the buttons, you have status light, status lights. So A will tell me if I have alarms on point A or point B, and then if the heat trace output is on. So that's saying that, am I telling the solid state relay to enter, to, to engage or the EMR to engage? And that, that tells me if the heat trace should be on or off. Now on the buttons, we've got shift, A, B, back, enter, and up and down. And you'll see these subcategories right here. So the shift enables these subcategories. So for example, if I wanted to take a look at alarm, I will hit shift, alarm, and it'll tell me, it'll go through all of my alarms for point A, and if I scroll down, there's no more alarms. If I wanna see the alarms on point B, all I have to do is hit A, B, and now I can see what my alarms are on point B. And then I can scroll down, I see I've got a ground fault trip and a high ground fault and no more alarms, okay? And I can just keep hitting back until I'm back to my main display. So the how to configure a 920 is actually um, it, a little bit complicated. So in here I've got monitor and I've got config as my secondary buttons. Now how the 920 works, and there's resources below and a, actually a really good cheat sheet in terms of all the configuration options. But when you get into configuration, um, there is some very high level basic settings in terms of set point, low temperature, um, low temperature setting for TS1, low load and ground fault settings. And then after those specific settings, the 920 goes into subcategories. So I'm gonna show you that now. So I'm gonna go to point A, I'm gonna go shift config, and then I'm right into control, the, the control set point. And if I go down, then I'm seeing, sorry, I skipped one. If I go at low TS1, so the low temperature sensor one alarm threshold, low load setting, high ground fault setting, ground fault trip setting. Um, and then after that, I'm in subcategories. So the subcategories are gonna look at TS alarm configs, I'm gonna to go to other alarm configurations. I'm gonna to go to point setup. There's common setup and then communications setup. And then inside each one of those subcategories is a crazy amount of options. So the cheat sheet that is in the attachment um, will, be, um, will be a godsend in terms of you know, a resource to use to know, hey, if I wanna change this, what ca what's categorized into rather than having to go in layer after layer of, of configuration settings. So the first one I thought we would touch on is, um, as, a, as we saw here before, is the control set point one. So to make changes on here is really, really easy. So all we're gonna do is if I wanted to change the set point on the C-Trace controller, I then am selected on it, it's gonna scroll through, and then I'm just gonna hit enter and then I can make modifications to it. And if I like where I'm at, I can just change it. Now my control set point is set to 50C. Okay. Same with if I wanted to make changes to my low temperature sensor one setting, low load setting, I can make these modifications right here. Okay. And if I want to back out and get out of this display, you can, we can wait a period of time and it'll just go back to my main monitor. Or I can just keep hitting back until I'm now in display mode. The next item I wanted to chat about is the auto cycle. So to change the auto cycle on a, on a 920 heat trace controller, we're gonna go back into shift and then config. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll to point setup. So I can keep scrolling down. So I'm in TS alarms config, subcategory, sub other alarms, 
and then point setup. So once I'm at the point setup, and then I can hit enter, and now I've got options to change various things here. So I'm gonna keep scrolling down until I see Auto cycle, and auto cycle is set to enable. So that's the first step. Is if I if this wasn't enable, it would it would be disabled. But I definitely want it enabled. So set to enable. I'm going to hit enter. Then I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to see what the auto cycle interval is, and this is set to six. So typically, what we recommend is that this usually gets, depending on where you are in the world, this usually gets set to 24, and then the auto cycle units is set to hours. So you can set this to hours minutes, I guess it's just hours or, in, or minutes. And then once you have that done, is that your auto cycle interval and auto cycle enabled disabled is making sure you're doing that for both point A and point B. And how to do that is point B, auto cycle set to disable, is just going between A and B when you're already in the configuration setting. So you don't have to go all the way back, go B and then into configuration. So that is a little handy. So if we're gonna set point B, I'm gonna go to enabled. So auto cycle is now enabled. Auto cycle interval is set to eight hours. So I would set this to 24. And then auto cycle units is set to hours. So we're good. And then those are all the configurations I'm going to make. I can just keep hitting back until I'm back to the main display page. Next thing I'm going to talk about is how to set up an ambient um, heat trace, um, ambient heat trace circuit within a panel. So the 920, because you've got separate modules, is if you wanted certain circuits to be ambient controlled, what the 920 MVENT's done is, is is something pretty pretty cool. Where because these aren't connected, you know, there's there's no data connection between these two modules is instead what they've done is within an entire panel, you could have one ambient RTD master, and then you could have ambient RTD slaves within the same heat trace control panel. And how they do that is they're using, um, you have to configure this, and then you have to wire external inputs, outputs between these modules, okay? So how we do this is a, um, it, there's a few steps to this, and the, Documentation in the guides below um, will, will help with this if you have any questions. There's some great wiring di uh, diagrams in the appendices, and then there is a configuration guide to get you through this. But the first thing we have to do is set, a pro, uh, set an ambient master um, heat trace controller. And the ambient master is typically will be, will be set to the first ambient in your panel, but it doesn't have to be. But there's two steps to do it for an ambient master. So the first one is we have to set up the 920 module has contacts that are set to um, external output and external input. And we have to configure those appropriately for your ambient master or ambient slave. And then once that's done, we have to go to the point setup and we have to set the RCD control mode of the controller. So it's like a two-step process that we have to do here. So, Let's say, for instance, we're going to have point A on controller 1, so 1A. One we're going to set this as our ambient master. Okay. So the ambient master, is where the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select A. We're going to go into the config mode, and then we're going to go to common setup. So we're going to keep going through here, point setup, common setup. And then once I'm in here, I'm going to scroll till I see external input is set to temp bus and then external output set to temp bus. So actually external input for a master is going to be set to not used. Okay? But the master is going to be set to an external output is going to be set to temp bus. So what's happening is, is that the RTD that will be connected to point 1A will be reading the temperature and it will output that output that to all of the ambient slaves you want to have in a heat trace panel. So I have to set the external output set to temp us on the master only. Now once that's done, the next thing we're going to go is we're going to go to point setup. So I'm on common setup. I'm now going to go to up 
to point setup, and there's a couple things here that we need to do. The first thing is we're going to go to TS control mode, and sorry, I want to go to TS fail mode first. So anytime you have an ambient circuit, the safest thing to do is that if that RTD were to fail in the field, you want to have a safe mode where the heat trace will energize if your RTD fails. Now, you can't always do this, um, but for ambient circuits, it's certainly safe to. But if you have RTDs that are located on process piping or process equipment, you need to take that into consideration. There's some design considerations to take, but for ambient, it's very safe to always set this to, um, to TS, fail mode is set to on. Okay. The next thing we want to take a look at is the control mode. So the control mode, what we're going to set to is we're going to go to TS1, we're going to go to external input, external, oh, sorry. Actually, my apologies. We are going to go because it's the ambient master. I'm just going to keep scrolling through this so we get back on. We're going to go to TS1 fail on, and that's what we're going to set to because it's the master. So we're going to be reading temperature off RTD TS1 um, terminal blocks, and to know which terminal blocks to set to, go take a look at the wiring diagrams and the appendices, and it'll tell you exactly which ones, um, which terminal blocks to, 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 to terminate your, your ambient master RTD. Okay. Okay, for your ambient slaves and your ambient masters, what will end up happening is I'm going to take this module off just to show you the, the, the control wiring. And I've already loosened the screws just for the sake of this video. So your external output is going to be set to terminal blocks 4 and 5. And your external inputs are going to be 20 and 21. So my ambient master on circuit A will have an external output coming off terminal blocks 4 and 5. And any ambient slaves, so even point B or 2A, 2B, um, you then wire the external inputs to 20 and 21. Again, take a look at the, the documentation and the appendices for the, for, the, for the wiring diagrams. But that physical wiring has to happen inside the panel if you want one master, ambient master, and you want to have ambient slaves um, connected to it. So if you're going to configure an ambient slave, the next thing is I'm going to go to point B just to illustrate this. And I'm going to back out just to start from the beginning. And I'm going to go into config. And for a slave, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the common setup again. Common setup. We're going to come in here and we're going to go temp units. And we're going to go external input is set to not use. And we, this we want to change to, we got forced on, inhibit. We want to send to temp bus. Okay. Now the Clint, there's going to be some editing you need to do here. Is that cool? OK, so to get into the point setup for an ambient slave, I'm going to use point B just to demonstrate it on the same controller. So on point B, I'm going to go to config. And then the first thing I'm going to go to is the common setup. Okay, so I'm in common setup. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to external input is set to temp bus. So typically this may be set to not use, but I'm going to leave it as set to temp bus. Hit enter, external input, temp bus. Now the next thing I need to do is then go to the point setup. So I can hit back. Now I'm back up a sub menu. I'm going to go up to point setup. I'm going to come into this. And then what I'm going to select is. TS fail mode, I want to make sure is set to on. So same as we mentioned on the uh, ambient masters, I want to make sure that if an RTD fails or if the slave no longer receives a signal from the masters, I want to make sure that I fail into a safe condition. I want the heat trace to energize if I have an RTD failure. Okay. So TS fail mode is set to on. Then the next thing I want to do is set the TS control mode is set to TS1 fail on. And I now want to change this to external input fail to TS2. But what I want to do is external input fail to TS1. Nope. External input fail on. And that's the one. So if an external input fails, I want the heat trace controller to energize. Okay. 
and that's it. Now you've got your temp bus set up for your master and your slaves, and you would just repeat this. So if 1A had your master, then you would have 2A and 2B set up the exact same way as an ambient slave if those were uh, intended to be ambient circuits, okay? Next thing I wanted to show is how to get into the configuration um, for communications. So the communications would be typically um, what we see as RS-485 communication. So to do this, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go into config, and we can do a shortcut. We can actually just go up, and this is the end. I can go right into communication settings. So the communication submenu is at the very, very end. And like I mentioned, documentation, some cheat sheets um, attached to this video um, will be a good resource. So once I'm at the communication, the one thing we need to do is if you're using RS-485 communication is you have to set the protocol. So by default, the protocol is always set to HTC bus. So this is old serial communication, and I've only ever seen this used once, but if you're gonna use, have your 920s control to a supervisory software, um, always set it to uh, Modbus. Okay, and you can use Modbus RTU or ASCII, but hopefully you're using um, Modbus RTU. Okay? Once the protocol is set to Modbus RTU, then what you need to do is you need to set the Modbus address for each point. So point A, point B gets its own individual Modbus address. But the 920s are the only heat trace controller I know that go a step further, and they have a sub address. So this is really important. So you need to know what your address of your heat trace controller is, Modbus address, but then also the sub address. And um, if you have any interest in why that is, shoot us a note and I can geek out about Modbus communication on the, on the 920 series. So Modbus address for point A is set to four. If I wanted to change it, I can just clearly, I can just simply go in and make modifications to it and hit enter. The Modbus sub address is also set, so you can set it to zero. Um, uh, to 32. And then if I keep scrolling down, I'm then going to set the baud rate, and typically this is set to 9600, parity none, and um, those are the only ones that, um, that you, can, um, you can make um, changes to. So that's how you get into it. But remember that if you change the protocol configuration or Modbus addresses, you need to take into account both A and B. So I can go to B, and then go into the Modbus address, and this will be independent of point A. So they both happen to be four, which is fine, because the sub address, if I go to point B, and I go to the Modbus sub address, the sub address will be one. And if I go to point A, this Modbus sub address will likely be zero. Okay, so that's how they differentiate. You can never have the same um, address and sub address on point A to point B. Okay? And then what you need to make sure is as you go through your panel that you have independent addressing for each one of them. You do not want to have a duplicate Modbus address and duplicate sub address because you'll, have, you'll run into heat trace, communication, um, heat trace communication issues. But that's it, guys. Hopefully, that this was, uh, hopefully this was useful and gave you, you know, an insight to a little bit of the most common items how to, um, within the 920 and how to, how to access them and how do you make some changes and configurations. Thanks, everyone. Take care.